There was uh, some talk about the Cabernet Sauvignon wine from uh, California from uh, 2011 and uh, subsequent years containing uh, cesium-137 from the Fukushima nuclear disaster in March of 2011. I'm gonna try to detect the cesium directly from the bottle first and then I'm gonna try to detect it from a concentrate. Eight hours later. So this is eight hours of the, uh, the wine. It didn't really pick up on anything except uh, uh, potassium-40 right here. Uh, but that's uh, but that's about it. So uh, good news for this kind of wine. I'm gonna keep it in uh, and drink it. I'm gonna try it with this uh, much uh, cheaper uh, Cabernet from California. This is uh, uh, 2016, and uh, I'm gonna try also this this one. It's also a cheap one, uh, 2014. Maybe I'll drink some of it. I don't know. I'm just gonna boil it down to a minimum and, and analyze that. Oh man, you know, so cheap wine when. Uh, you have to crack the top instead of uh, pop it with the regular corkscrew. That's some cheap ass wine. I crap burned the crap out of it, damn it. <coughs> so here's the uh, concentrate of the uh, the wine. Let's put it into the uh, detector. To make sure nothing else interferes, so I have this uh, this shield right here. It's uh, an inch and a half of, uh, of lead. Put it on top of it. Ooh. So let's see what happened after five hours. So 18,000 uh, seconds. And we'll see where, where we got. Five hours later. So this, uh, this wine seems to be okay. It has nothing but uh, natural stuff in it. Potassium 40 showing up again. We have thallium and lead, radium. So yeah, I don't see anything but uh, natural stuff. So this one's okay. Let's try the next one. Let's hope I don't burn the shit out of this one. It's okay because uh, if we're looking for cesium, it's a uh, very, very soluble in water and you know, all that salt, so should be good. So, this is what we have uh, after five hours. Uh, same thing, nothing here in this uh, 2014 wine. This pick is the usual uh, uh, potassium 40. This, this right here up there in this area is, uh, is lead, is due to the shielding for the detector and this uh, this right here is nothing it's just the uh, annihilation peak at 511 kev uh, that has nothing to do with uh, radioactive material this is a, this is different okay but I'm not I'm not giving up yet through the bottle we can't really detect anything right away even in eight hours uh, the 2016 doesn't have anything the 2014 doesn't seem to have anything so well we can try to concentrate to 2011 and uh, maybe we can try 2012 uh, and the 2011 if I can't find some but one thing we're not gonna run out in this town is a liquor store Cesium this one's been on the shelf you know, for 11 years <laughs> 2011 so here's what I uh, have uh, collected from the from the liquor store this one I have high hope for it because it's from uh, Napa Valley and this is the one that was subject to the uh, study for cesium this one I thought hey what the hell why not try also Washington State. They are gonna be concentrated down to a minimum, maybe a 50 mil, uh, and then they're gonna have to go in a detector for about five hours each. So right there, we're looking at 20 hours of analysis. So finally, here are the results. I've conducted the analysis for five hours for each of these bottles. And uh, even this one, I uh, let it go for a little bit longer. I let the acquisition go on for 24 hours, this one, and even 48 hours. I couldn't detect cesium-137 in any of the wine I've tested. Now, this does not mean that my detector is deficient or that there is no cesium-137 or that I should have let it go on for longer. No, no, no. It means that uh, the level we're trying to detect is below my current setup ability. Uh, let me explain. Number one, any radioactive source broadcasts radiation in any direction, not just towards the detector. So we already lose a lot to the environment. Number two, the detector is not 100% efficient, meaning that uh, for every gamma radiation entering the detector, there is only a few interaction with the detection medium and even fewer actual detection. This is called the efficiency. And it doesn't matter if it's a Geiger counter, a scintillation detector, or a semiconductor detector. There's an efficiency value for all of them. Number three, the shielding. 
This is kind of a catch-22. It prevents outside noise from interfering with the uh, measurement, but it also introduces noise on its own, mainly because of the backscattering effect. This is uh, very clear on this uh, Cobalt 60 spectrum. If you remember the uh, X-ray fluorescence, this is exactly what's happening here. The source of radiation inside the detector act as the X-ray tube and generate fluorescence within the lead shielding. Number four. The activity level could also be drowned in all this background noise. In the perfect world, we would get this kind of spectrum where all background is filtered out. So a very good signal could be hidden in this noise. Even with all these factors inhibiting detection, there's still good news. Look at the potassium 40 peak, for example. Wine contain about one gram of potassium per bottle. So that's roughly 0.12 milligram of potassium 40, which should have an activity of about 30 becquerel or about 30 decay per second in all direction. That's not a lot. And we can still see the peak very clearly. Also, this is a straight detection without any type of anti-coincidence signal processing equipment. And the study talks about one to two becquerel per bottles of uh, cesium-137. That would put the peak right around here, completely drowned in the background. I don't have anywhere near the same sensitivity of research lab equipment, but I can still pick up the very weak radioactivity of potassium-40 in the uh, in wine. So I might not be able to go all the way down to one or two becquerel. At least in this region of the spectrum, I can detect a fairly low amount of radiation, which is good news. Uh, my equipment is pretty amateurish, but it gets the job done. And uh, for my purposes, it's uh, plenty sufficient. So in conclusion, don't let a few miserable back walls of cesium-137 ruin your day. If you enjoy wine like I do, you have a lot more to fear from the alcohol itself than any type of radiation. A lot more potassium-40 enters your body every single day. And we never think about it twice. So if a few pesky back rolls of cesium-137 enters your body, so what? It will probably be eliminated rapidly in the natural process. So anyway, I, uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any comments, any suggestions, things you want me to test and, and try it out, uh, let me know in the comment. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And I will see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.